Hello, my name is Chuck Hong, and today we will learn how to make pokchmani, which is traditional Korean pouch. Kind of looks like this, and this time for, well, people who doesn't really have sewing machine or not really um, familiar with sewing in general, I will do step by step and all hand sewn instruction. So, follow me. I will help you guys finish this project from start. Yeah? Alrighty. Okay, so before we even start the whole thing, we're gonna learn how to do backstitch. It's going to be used through this entire project. So, first of all, make a knot. And people, yeah, kind of find around like that and pull the needle really fast and then uh yeah you just <laughs> you just watch me failing it um yes uh that's how people usually do it but i'm not very good at that particular method so that's why i'm usually just pinching just a little bit of the end part in half and then make a little loopy loop and then pull it to make these little things so that's how you usually do it. By the way, this pattern is actually adapted from the book that I purchased from Korea called 내 손으로 만드는 사랑스러운 우리 아이 한복. So, long title, but it's actually just means um, handmade cute hanbok for my kids. So, that's... <laughs> and now we're going to start. So first, Put two fabrics together and then puncture it through your needle and pull the thread all the way at the end where the knot is and then you go a little bit forward and you your tip of the needle will go underneath the fabric and then it will puncture ahead of where your stitch already is and then you are going back at it and go through with the needle right before the little stitch and then pull it out like that and then puncture it through ahead so it's um two steps ahead and then one step back and the good thing about this well to be honest it it's a a lot of thread but the good thing is it is very very strong strong stitch and it can be quite beautiful to look at well if you're doing it right because as you can clearly see i'm a little janky but hey i'm trying so materials scissor to cut all these tiny little scissors to kind of clean it up a bit and three different types of fabric. So that's for top of the outer layer of Pokjumani. And here's a bottom part of Pokjumani for outer layer. And they will be attached there. And also the inner part. So I'm just using simpler fabrics, but just giving you guys heads up. Every time you put them together, um, the right side like where the pattern is clear would actually be meeting each other's. I'll explain it to you later. So here's a thread or little rope thing for that bokchumani and thread, all purpose is fine. And most importantly, needle. So there goes a needle. And you know, People don't think about it much, but pins are very, very important too. It makes your life so much easier when you're doing hand sewing or even just using machine. Doesn't matter. Put them in a the place. So as I mentioned, we are putting everything together. So outer layer for the first. So top part and bottom part, put them on each other's on top. And then from the cut of the fabric, um, and the stitch I usually have about mm, like a half an inch gap and you just go down the straight line 
you can definitely um, draw a line for indication to where you would go. Um, I did not do it this time, so that's why it was kind of not the straight straight line, but if there's an indication, it would make your job so much easier. And when the thread is getting short, you just kind of stop it and make little knots and cut the thread off and you can start from there. So there you go. So that's the outer layer before we flip. And then we are attaching inner layer of this money. Same as that. So just straight line using backstitching. And just place through that. So remember, every time you put the layers together, you would want the right side of those fabrics facing each other's and then sew them together. So this time, uh, my linen and my cotton, they're just kind of don't have top or bottom. So I just put it as is. But if you are using some more ornate, uh, ornate fabrics have that into your consideration now we're going to iron them so first we will open at the seam and see that half an inch well roughly half an inch gap we are flattening them down ironing it and be careful with your fingers um just don't get burned please And do that for all the seams we have. So, so we can have kind of cleaner, flatter fabrics for us to work for. So, two sides that you just put them together, the outer layers together, and inner layers should be on the outside. So, makes little tic-tac shape or a little oval-ish shape and then fold it in half and when you fold it in half um, the inner part in this case the white um, fabric it's going on top before you start your sewing it will help you a lot um, we are leaving little gap in the middle i will indicate so yeah um not all the way through but those gap needs to well be open for now so start from the corners or one end and go toward the middle where you will leave some gap and it's not just going to be open completely um we are putting three layers together like two of the um, out layer like outside layers and one of the white fabric just together it's just very top part of this construction right now as you've seen just that needs to be not sewn together so we can flip this whole entire thing through the hole that we are not sewing together so like that just push the one layer up and then do put everything else so everything else together like that so through that hole we will flip this so put your finger there go to the corner and then push the corner out first and pull it out pull it out through that hole and don't do it too roughly because sometimes it can damage so don't do it just be gentle you we have time no one's gonna chase us and there you go we flipped it yay so things should look a little cleaner and a little seamless and for the opening we just pull everything flip you know um, we will do whip stitch 
to be honest, there's a lot of good videos, good instruction videos um, that you can watch on YouTube. But as you can see now, whip stitch is the fastest stitch, I would say. So just push needle in, pull the thread out, put needle in little front, and just continue. And it's a relatively smaller part, so you can kind of finish it fast. And in the pattern itself, the dot and dash indicates the top of the final construction. And underneath would be where the hole should be, the indicator. Um, the book called for a little hole puncher for two millimeters. Uh, I, we don't need to. You can even use scissors um, or I'm using this um, ice pick looking thing. And after widening the hole, I started from one corner to weave through this polyester rope thread. And then from the other end of the corner, I'm continuing the same process using same hole weaving in and out or outside and inside of this construction. So we're almost done. There you go, there you go. And yes, going through like that. So one hole should have both of the thread or rope going through, going in and out of the same place and tie the knots for both ends. We are done. You can definitely expand the size of this pattern and use it for anything. I mean, you can pull them like that from the end and um, kind of you can knot it together to make it more safer or make it big and just use it as a bag that you use it for daily. So thank you so much for watching the video and ask me a question in the comments.